Have you recently noticed a coach bag being released as part of a small batch with a customer being told they would be the only batch and the item would not be sold again? And then later, the same item is released in another small batch, even though the first release was supposed to be a limited edition? What the hell is going on? If Coach was going to re-release the item later, why did they make it look like the first instance was the only opportunity the customer get the item? Well, welcome to FOMO marketing, where the illusion of scarcity and exclusivity are used to trick you into buying an item by using psychological concept of the fear of missing out. I have been used to seeing this marketing technique from many luxury brands. Hermes and Louis Vuitton take the lead, for example, but Coach has also joined the ranks of these brands. What is happening? Is there a big change for Coach coming? Let me discuss everything in detail. Before I start, I have to give credit to Millie Gallier, who did a video on this and described everything I have been feeling suspicious about. She is the one who inspired me to do this video, so thank you. Now, let's move on to the subject. You must know that Coach is an old brand that goes back to 1941. There are certain designs put the early 2000s in a chokehold. So when Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake wore denim on the red carpet at the 2001's American Music Awards, Coach was among the frontrunners for the title of It Bag, alongside Dior and Louis Vuitton. But while the Dior saddlebag and Louis Vuitton's monogram retained their iconic status and popularity, Coach basically disappeared into thin air. But since 2020, social media has been swamped with Coach tabbies and even Coach bags from the archives. Did you ever wonder how this bounce back happened? The reason Coach bags lost their popularity in the first place was the fact that they became too ubiquitous. Of course, the resistance to move away from the clean cut aesthetic didn't help them either. The bags were everywhere and that's why they lost their appeal. They weren't so unique anymore. Does that make sense? So what Coach did to refurbish the brand image was rebranding its former pieces from a modern audience and breaking the internet with bags that shouted the early 2000s while also giving out a special modern feel. But of course, only putting out stylish bags does not immediately help a brand gain this crazy popularity. Coach decided to get its stuff together and take back its name. With new designers, it consciously started a brand revival. Most importantly, the people of Coach made massive investments in marketing. You might say every brand does marketing, what's different about that? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Coach has not been doing an innocent type of marketing. Well, no marketing is innocent, but the brand has especially been sneaky about its strategies and probably fooled a lot of people into buying their bags. By the way, I love Coach bags. I have talked about them many times in my videos. I am in no way attacking the brand, but we should not forget that it's still a luxury brand and its main goal is to make loads of money. And I'm looking into their marketing strategy, not the actual quality of their bags. As Millie also pointed out in her video, Coach has been utilizing various techniques to create an image of exclusivity around its bags. First of all, it has been using social media to its favor a lot. Coach influencers, for example, are widespread on TikTok. They work at Coach and they advertise supposedly limited edition bags before anyone else buys them. Coach has also gotten the help of other type of influencers, sending them bags as gifts and using them as free advertisements. So what has been happening is this, Coach does limited releases, right? They release an item as part of a small batch and say, this is the only time you can buy this. During this time, it uses influencers as part of its marketing to make it seem like they have all the same bag and now it's time for you to have it too. But here's the catch. This limited release is the only time you can buy it. Otherwise, you'll miss the opportunity. I'll get into the details of this later, but this is classic usage of FOMO in marketing. These bags sell out so quickly you couldn't even imagine. But what they do is they actually release the bag later, maybe a few months later, again in a small batch, again as a limited release. They perhaps act like, oh, the demand was too high so we decided to do a re-release. But no, this is what they plan to do from the beginning. And they keep things vague on purpose to limit information so the customer doesn't really know if they'll be able to have the chance to buy the bag again. Isn't this tricking customers by omitting important information? As I said, this is classic FOMO marketing, where the fear of missing out is used to luxury brands' advantage. FOMO marketing uses psychology to tap into consumers' emotional responses and triggers, making them want to act quickly to avoid missing out on an opportunity. FOMO marketing capitalizes on this powerful emotion, encouraging engagement, conversions, and sales by creating a sense of urgency, scarcity, and exclusivity. This is exactly what Coach has been doing. The same method was crucial in Louis Vuitton's successful advertising strategy as well. When you, as a consumer, are aware that a certain product is limited, you are motivated to make that purchase as quickly as possible, thinking that it will be available only for a short period. Brands like Louis Vuitton have been leveraging FOMO to drive consumer behavior. 
Various case studies prove that especially launching limited edition collections creates buzz and anticipation because we all have that innate desire for what we perceive as rare or unattainable. Maybe Coach has been doing this before too. I don't know. But one thing is for sure, they definitely increased the usage of this strategy even more in the last year or so. And they're doing it in such a way that we don't even realize that the prices are getting higher as well. We believe that they're getting higher because the quality is top notch or because they're more exclusive now. However, Coach is slowly but surely positioning itself to move higher in the luxury tier list. It no longer wants to be the affordable luxury brand everyone knows it for. Maybe it wants to preserve that image while continuing to increase prices. I'm trying to say that we should not let their marketing approach make us turn a blind eye to the price increases or their created perception of hype and demand. Do you really like that new limited edition coach bag or are you being sucked into the hype and demand? Moreover, what they're doing seems to be working for them as they started doing less sales. Speaking of sales, one Reddit user noticed something very suspicious on the coach outlet website. Apparently, the bags are more expensive when they're supposed to be on sale. At the time of her comments a year ago, the Coach Swinger bag's normal price was $140, but during the big Black Friday sale, the bag was being sold for $175. The math isn't mathing. Something's obviously wrong here. I know other brands do this, but for some reason, I didn't expect it from Coach. What could be the result of Coach's new marketing techniques? Well, losing out on their loyal customers. But who cares about them as long as they're making loads of money, right? Have you guys noticed this change in Coach's social media advertising and the tricky limited releases? Or am I being delusional? Share your thoughts with me for sure. Like I said, I'm not a Coach hater, and I talked favorably about the brand in multiple videos, especially this one. Go check it out if you're interested. Don't forget to like, share this video, and subscribe to my perspective. See you soon!